Well, hi there, history fans, and welcome back to another reaction video. Today, we have the video called Lady Death, World's Deadliest Female Sniper from the Infographics Show. Um, this video was suggested by a Patreon member. If you want to become a member on Patreon, the link is going to be in the description below. Um, as always, you can also put in suggestions in the comment section, and eventually I'm going to come to that video also. Um, yeah, the link for the original video is going to be also in the description below, so go give them a view and a like, or if you want to see the whole video in one segment, you can go also uh, to the original video. Uh, as always, I'm going to uh, give some of my thoughts and commentary and additional information to the video. Uh, if you have some additional information, corrections or whatever, uh, I would like you also to comment in the comment section below and please uh, take part in the polls that are going to be in the upper uh, side or the upper part of the video. So yeah, let's just jump into the video. Lady Death. <clears throat> the date is September 1941 and Adolf Hitler has launched an invasion of the Soviet Union. Operation Barbarossa has sent 3 million Nazi soldiers streaming east towards Moscow and the Soviets Barbarossa, have been caught completely yeah. by surprise. Desperate battles to slow the advance rage all across the Eastern Front, but in one small corner of the war, all is still. Barely perceivable under a homemade ghillie suit made up of rags permeated with clumps of dirt and grass, a Soviet sniper hides. In a surface made up almost entirely of men, this sniper is a woman, and the path that has led her to this moment has been a difficult one in the male-dominated Soviet military. With the German invasion though, the Soviets need all the trained shooters they can get, and there are few men in the Soviet Union, let alone anywhere in the world, who can outshoot Yulmila Pavlyuchenko. The wind blows Yulmila gently across the Russian Pavlyuchenko. steppes, and in the distance, the roar of artillery and cannon fire tells of the desperate battle to stop the German advance. Here though, all is still until suddenly Yumila spots it, a slight rustling in a bush a few hundred yards away, and then slowly, very slowly, she sees something, the telltale shape of a German helmet. Yumila swings her scope onto her target. The brush is thick and she can only just make out the outline of the steel helmet. She aims a few inches above the helmet after gauging the wind and range, knowing that at such extreme range her bullet's trajectory will initially cause it to rise, but then drop off again. By aiming above her target, she knows that at this range the bullet will fall and strike right between the Nazi's eyes. Slowly, she moves her finger into the trigger well of her rifle and starts to slowly apply pressure. Suddenly though, Yudmila stops. Something isn't right here. She knows she's been hunted by the other side. In the short few months that she's been eliminating Nazi invaders, she's killed dozens, and the enemy Nazi has taken invaders. note. She has already killed four enemy snipers sent to kill her. Yudmila smells a trap, and she releases the pressure on her trigger. Moving so four slowly as snipers. to be nearly imperceptible, she crawls forward and into a bush thick with brambles. Knowing she's being hunted makes her feel exposed. The brambles scratch at her face, arms, and legs, and every Every breath she takes sends sharp thorns piercing into her flesh, but Yumila ignores the pain. An hour passes, then another. Yeah. The thorns have caused countless tiny rivulets of blood from the many stabs on her flesh, each new breath diving them into her skin once more. Six hours pass, and then finally, movement. A Nazi sniper adjusts in the bush, just a few feet from the helmet Yumila has been carefully watching this entire time. His patience exhausted. She fires. Another fascist invader is dead. Yudmila Pavlichenko was born in a village near present-day Ukraine in... Uh, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts if you're like, if you had some military experience or if you know somebody that had military experience. As far as I know, like this, uh, the training of a sniper is pretty expensive and also the equipment of a sniper is pretty expensive and hard. Uh, I mean, the training is hard and so on. So... As far as I know, like, a sniper is very, uh, how, how to how to say it in, in right terms to not sound, like, stupid, but, like, uh, like, very expensive and, and, and more, how to say it without sounding, uh, stupid, like, more, more valuable to, 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 to the army. But I, I, I really I really don't know but that, that that are like my thoughts on it 
In 1916, like pilots, even as a child, and, she eschewed the things like, she was supposed to embrace as a girl, and instead enjoyed playing rough and tumble games with the boys. Growing up, she was constantly being told to act like a lady, to which Yudmila replied with scorn. When she moved to Kiev with her parents yeah. as a teenager, she grew sick of her neighbor's son bragging about his shooting skills, and thus she joined a local shooting club, <laughs> determined to prove she was superior. Practicing as often Gonna as she could you. and encouraged <laughs> by her father, Yudmila soon became a crack shot and racked up countless wins in local and even national shooting competitions, earning her trophies and ribbons. At age 16, Yudmila was wed to a doctor and gave birth to a son, Rostislav, though the marriage would be very short-lived. While at Kiev, she attended the local university but also trained with a local paramilitary organization that all Russian youth were expected to train with, though typically only the boys. Here, Yunmila further really? honed her sharpshooter skills, earning her more awards and growing a reputation as a crack shot. Then on June 22, 1941, Hitler invaded the Soviet Union and Yunmila knew she had to do her part. Showing up at the military recruiter station, the officer immediately commented that she would serve as a nurse, only for Yunmila to cut him off and inform him that she wanted to carry a rifle and to fight. The officer laughed and asked Yudmila if she even knew anything about rifles, and in response, she dumped several of her awards and ribbons on his desk. Despite her obvious qualification, uh, something on, on that and her like uh, upgrowing and so on, like when she was young. Uh, yeah, after the revolution. So the kind of the idea that that the revolution brought was, you know, like all oh, workers unite. Uh, whatever i don't know skin color gender whatever you are like you're a worker you should unite against the so-called bourgeoisie and so on but uh in in their thoughts like women and men should be equal and on paper they they were kind of equal like females could vote but you know like voting was in the soviet union like yeah but technically in technical terms they could vote they could uh acquire whatever position they they want they can go on university and so on and in some western states like during uh, before the second world war during the second world war and also after the second world war females were like you know like expected to only be in kitchen in you know like the traditional role but as i said it was kind of only on paper of course females would would rise to power inside of the party and in factories and so on but they were still expected to uh, fill out also the traditional female role as you can see like she was a sharpshooter she had a training she she was killed and so on but still like the officer was saying yeah despite all of that like go be a nurse like which is let's say it more traditional for for females in a in a combat role du during the past but if we compare the the soldiers of the soviet union and the soldiers of western powers let's say uh, uh france uh and great britain and the us yeah more female soldiers who are actively with a rifle on the front were on the soviet union in like on the soviet front than in the western states uh and yeah they, they were more used in combat than than in the western states vacations though the recruitment officers implored her to serve as a nurse instead until finally if we if we uh like uh i'm not talking about the different resistance movements like the french resistance the 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 polish resistance the yugoslav resistance of course inside of those resistance were females who were also actively fighting but I mean like regular armies. Patients, though, the recruitment officers implored her to serve as a nurse instead, until finally agreeing to give her a chance to prove her worth. Her first combat experience would come in Moldova, though initially a shortage of mm. rifles meant that Yudmila was forced to help dig trenches. She would later write in her memoirs, It was very frustrating to have observed the course of battle with just a single grenade in one's hand. Then suddenly an artillery round burst nearby, sending shell splinters ripping through the area. A soldier next to her was struck and became too wounded to use his rifle anymore. Yudmila gladly cool accepted mustache. the weapon and began at last to make the Nazis and their allies pay for invading her homeland. 
Yumila, however, wished to serve as a sniper, not an infantryman, and once more insisted on being given an opportunity to prove herself. That opportunity came when a week later she was sent out into the field to eliminate two Romanian soldiers who were cooperating with the enemy and dropped them both from a quarter mile away. Calling it her baptism by fire, Yumila was at last accepted as a full-fledged sniper, earning 309 confirmed kills, 36 of which were enemy snipers sent to eliminate her. Yumila's reputation quickly grew and she became known as what? Lady Death. The Germans feared Yumila so much that when sending their own snipers after her didn't work, they began to try to bribe her. Soldiers riding in... Uh, just a quick... Wow, 309. <laughs> That's a big... Uh, number but regarding yeah the Romanians I just wanted to reference that uh, yeah we always forget that uh, with the operation Barbarossa like the army the the, um, the army that invaded the Soviet Union was uh, under the leadership of the German uh, officers and the German uh, military corps but it was I wouldn't say a multinational army but there were a lot of other nationalities, Romanians, Croats, uh, even some, I mean, different corpses of corp, cor, corps, military corps or, or military units from different countries were involved in invading the Soviet Union. And that's probably how she uh, got her first Romanian kills, because Romanians were also part of the invasion of the Soviet Union. And Lady Death, uh, that, that was probably a nickname ga uh, gave that, that the Germans gave to her, or the Russians. I'm not sure. But always, you know, like with Simo Heha, you always, uh, the Finnish sniper, you always have like uh, the different um, sides giving different names. To, and sending their own snipers after her didn't work, they began to try to bribe her. Soldiers riding inside armored vehicles would broadcast out through loudspeakers offers for a commission in the German army and chocolates, a Chocolate. very rare delicacy in wartime Europe. When the bribes didn't work, yeah. they soon turned to threats, with promises of being torn to 309 pieces if captured, the number of kills attributed to Lady Death. Yudmila would be wounded many times throughout two years of combat, but remained at the front lines despite her injuries. It wasn't until, so until an aerial bombardment of her position sent shrapnel into her face that Yudmila was pulled off the front lines. By this time, her value as a sniper was far outweighed by her value as a propaganda tool, and the heroic tales Definitely. of Lady Death were known all across the Soviet Union, inspiring both men and women to resist the fascist invaders. She was forced away from combat and turned to teaching a new generation of yeah, propaganda during war times is, is uh, very effective and also um, um, very let's let's call it lucrative, because then you motivate the the the, the home front, the so-called home front, to continue the battle. You know, like you have the symbols of resistance, uh, and she was probably or definitely one of the symbols of the resistance to the invaders of Soviet snipers. But with the war going poorly for the Soviets, she was eventually sent on a tour of the United States in an attempt to garner support from America for the war effort. In really? America, Yudmila was appalled at the behavior of the reporters who hounded her relentlessly. She was asked about her uniform, if she wore makeup to battle, and countless other inane what? and very what sexist questions. She was expected to act like a lady, and yet Yudmila had killed hundreds of men what? and watched nearly as many of her own comrades die. To her, Americans were soft, their land untouched. Yeah, but that was actually a good question, like, what do you do as a sniper when you need to pee? You, you, you're not allowed to move because then the enemy snipers or the enemy could see where your position is and then shoot you. Like, hmm, a lot of discipline. As we saw in the, be in the beginning, like, she was in one position for six or what, I don't know, six, seven hours. Actually, a good question. I don't, I don't know what they do in that position. ...by war and their men and women living in safety and comfort while the world burned in war. She became sullen and depressed, and her handlers pondered returning her to the Soviet Union. Then, Yudmila was invited to the White House, where she met President Franklin Roosevelt and his wife, First really? Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor and Yudmila immediately connected, and in a life full of pain and difficulties, her friendship with the First Lady would prove to be a rare spot of light. In photos of Yudmila, the English? only time she's found smiling is when she is standing with her friend, Eleanor Roosevelt. 
Together, the two women went on a tour of the United States. With the war gaining in intensity, it was growing more and more certain that America would need to join the fight against the Nazis. <laughs> Yumila spoke of her experiences to both reporters and military leaders, and ever present at her side stood the First Lady. At one meeting in Chicago, she spoke of her exploits having killed over 309 Nazi invaders, and then, to the delight of Eleanor Roosevelt, chastised the assembled men, saying, Don't you think, gentlemen, that you've been hiding behind my back for too long? Yumila would oh, return to the burn. Soviet Union shortly before burn. the US joined the war, and continued burn. to train snipers for its duration. After war's end, she returned to Kiev and earned her history degree, serving as a historian for oh, the Soviet Navy. Yumila, however, was a troubled woman, haunted by the carnage she had seen during the war and the nice. death of a lover who had bled out in her arms on the front lines. Plagued by PTSD, Yumila became an alcoholic, attempting to find what peace she could at the bottom of a bottle. Despite ever worsening tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union, in 1957, former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt visited Moscow on a goodwill trip. After meeting with Soviet leadership, she demanded to know the whereabouts of her old friend. And so this is after the war, or I didn't get Union. it. In 19. Despite ever worsening tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union, in 1957, former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt visited Moscow on a goodwill trip. After meeting with Soviet leadership, she demanded to know the whereabouts of her old friend, and initially, her request to meet with her was denied. Just a quick note on the PTSD. Yeah, just, just, uh, I, I heard it from a lot of people from the last war. Uh, you know, like a lot of people from the last war uh, in Yugoslavia, Croatia, Bosnia, whatever you want to call it, Yugoslav Civil War or War of Independence or whatever, uh, that a lot of the sharpshooters and snipers who were active on, on in that war, that a lot of them, and I know some of them personally, a lot of them uh, got... PTSD and a lot of them like uh, you know some of them see the, the the faces of the men that they killed and then wake up in in, in the night and you know like because imagine that you as a sniper you see that person in the moment of their death like I think I think it's a Although you know that that's the enemy and you need to fight them and they're bad and whatever, especially in her case with the Germans advancing to the Soviet Union, but you still, you know, like you have that shock of a person, you see the last breath of the person uh, that you're killing. Soon, the Soviets learned why Mrs. Roosevelt is legendary as one of America's most formidable first ladies, and caved under her incessant demands to be allowed to meet with Yudmila. Watched over by a Soviet minder meant to keep an eye on Yudmila's interactions with Eleanor, Yudmila oh. distracted the minder for a They're moment and pulled Eleanor into a private room, slamming the door shut behind her. In a moment of privacy, Yudmila threw her arms around her dear friend, and locking the door against the shouts of both the Soviet minder and Mrs. Roosevelt's American Secret Service guards, the two happily <laughs> reminisced about their favorite memories touring the U.S. together. Yumila Pavlyshenko, Lady Death, would die in Moscow in 1974 at 58 years of age. She would be honored with multiple medals and two postage stamps issued in her honor and bearing her image. A deeply troubled woman, her unique friendship with the American First Lady proved that no amount of ideological differences should ever drive two nations apart. Today, she is still remembered by the Russian and Ukrainian women, who continue looking up to her as a role model and example. Do you love strange, unexpected stories that defy belief but are completely true? Have you ever wondered what it was like to be a plague doctor during an outbreak of the Black Death? Or a detective a... wandering the streets of London tracking Jack the Ripper? Or the captain of the Titanic on its cursed yeah, maiden voyage? Yeah, probably advertising. Yeah, cool story. Uh, I, I didn't know about her uh, before the video. So, uh, yeah, the, there are a lot of interesting stories about uh, uh, different individuals that were part in 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 the in, sec in the Second World War and also different wars, but it's kind of sad that that she you know like um, that she ended like that with PTSD and and kind of alone and everything. But uh, I, I would like to have your thoughts, especially if you're from Eastern Eastern Europe. So. 
let's say Belarus, Ukraine, Russia, uh, let's count in Moldova and Poland and, and the Baltic states. Uh, uh, don't don't get political here. I, I'm just saying, like, like from from those ex-Soviet states or whatever, like for people who served in the Red Army during the Second World War, we all know that the Soviets eventually, uh, like, installed communist regimes in 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 Eastern Europe. But how do you feel about those people who were part of the so like the Red Army? Who were fighting against the Germans? Do you and that and they were of your nationality? So let's say, uh, as I, I don't know if I got it right, but she was actually Ukrainian by nationality. But let's say for Ukrainians, how do you feel about that? That she was part of the Red Army, which would eventually, uh, you know, like fight the which fought the the, the fascists and throw them out, but also installed a communist regime in your state so yeah i think it's it's a really interesting question because i know on in southeastern europe uh, in the ex yugoslav yugoslavian states um it's a controversial topic uh not because of the soviets the soviets went a little bit into vojvodina today serbia uh into northern serbia and then went to hungary so they didn't go through the whole state, and that's how Tito and and uh, the the Yugoslav Communist Party kind of uh, had their le legitimacy because not ninety five percent of the country was liberated by the Yugoslav partisans, so they couldn't install. It's a different topic, uh, in a different and difficult topic, but uh, it's still a controversial thing, you know. Like yeah, the Yugoslav Communists fought the Germans, but then they also did atrocities. And they uh, installed a communist government, which would later on also oppress people and so on, which wasn't, uh, and it wasn't like in the Soviet Union, but it also had periods of oppression and, and killing and so on. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, I would like you to be a part of the community. Just hit the subscribe button. Don't forget the notification bell to get notified when new videos come out and well yeah see ya